So you have a great product and you spend a bunch of time researching keywords, matching them to your title and description. You've spent more time than you ever have taking pictures just for all that work to result in no sales. Today, I'm sharing the four things I do for every new listing I create that creates me best seller Etsy listings over and over again. In case you're new here, my name is Sam. I'm the real estate broker turned 3D printing entrepreneur and top 1% Etsy seller. One of the questions I get asked most often is why aren't my listings getting viewed or I'm getting views, but why aren't they selling? I'll admit this can be very frustrating for not only new sellers, but even for someone like myself who is a veteran Etsy seller. Over the course of the last four years selling on Etsy, I've discovered four things that I do with every new listing that has resulted in my listings getting the Etsy bestseller badge over and over again. Stick with me because number four is the easiest and I think has the biggest potential impact on generating bestsellers over and over. We also have all the sections marked out in the chapters below, so if you wanna jump around, feel free. Is there demand for your product? As Etsy sellers, we tend to create products that we like. This isn't a bad strategy, but it should really just be your starting point. Before you even create the product or take pictures and do all that exciting listing stuff, you need to rationally look to see if there is any demand for the product. If there is ever a time you need to be honest with yourself, this is it. It won't do you any good to ignore this step if it means you do all the work to create a product no one actually wants. Nothing causes burnout faster than putting in a ton of work over and over again for no results. And no tips, tricks, hacks, or any other cleverly named thing will make up for the lack of sales that result from no one actually wanting the product. Set yourself up for success and do your research ahead of time. Using sites like E-Rank or Everbee are great tools to determine if the demand for your product is there. When you start doing this research, you'll quickly stumble upon the question, what is a good monthly search volume? Though there is no one size fits all, I tend to want keywords that are relevant to my product in the multiple thousand searches per month. When creating your listing, keep the idea of gifts in mind. In case you missed it, Etsy is leaning hard into the idea of being the place for gifts. They developed a whole new search system all centered around gifts, so I believe it's in your best interest to lean into this. If your product makes for a good gift, let Etsy know. If your product makes for a good Mother's Day gift, in the title, maybe add unique Mother's Day gift. Also, follow it up by reserving a few of your keywords to focus on the idea of being a gift. I have a few rules I follow with my Etsy shop, and this one is pretty simple. If Etsy's into it, I'm into it. Etsy wants to be the place for gifts. So though I don't know this for sure, I don't think it's a stretch that if your listings communicate that they make great gifts, that by default, you could see some increase in listing rank. When Etsy is ranking your listings, there are a number of factors that go into it. However, the biggest thing is just sales. Etsy is in the fee business, and they only get that fee when a sale is made. So it's in their best interest to promote and push listings that sell. New listings are being created every day, so Etsy needs to make an early determination on if these new listings are going to be good sellers for them. It's been widely reported that to help aid in this, they give all new listings a honeymoon or halo period. Essentially, they give new listings a boost for a certain period of time to see if they convert shoppers to sales. So as Etsy sellers, we have a unique opportunity to capitalize on this window and use it to our advantage in an effort to show Etsy that our product will sell. I do this in two ways. First, I run a pretty hefty sale on the new listing. There is a term in retail called the loss leader. The idea is that you sell a product at a loss in order to attract customers and stimulate other profitable sales. What we are doing isn't quite that, but it's close. For the first few weeks of posting, I calculate a discount rate to where I'm not losing money, but I'm nearly breaking even on the sale. The idea is we are trying to price it so attractively that people purchase it shortly after listing it, which communicates to Etsy that this is a listing that converts shoppers into buyers. The second thing you need to do alongside this though is advertise the listing. I know there is a lot of opinions around Etsy ads. However, for this discount price strategy to work, running ads is a must. There is so much noise on Etsy and our honeymoon period or halo period only lasts so long. So we have to cut through that noise and get our listing shown. If you just list and wait, it can take weeks or even months for your listing to rank or even be indexed by Etsy and Google for that matter. By the time they do that, your honeymoon period is over and you could have missed your window. 
So for this discount strategy to work, I think you have to run ads along with it. So the product and the discount rate for the product gets in front of the buyers. So the series of events plays out like this. You list the product, you offer a large discount while advertising the product, you get sales at that discounted rate, and you make little to no money. However, you earn a 12 people have bought this in the last 24 hours tag or a bestseller badge. You then turn off the sale and list at full price. New buyers see the listing, see the full price, see the 12 people have bought or the bestseller tag, and it instantly communicates to them that your product is worth the price and increases buyer confidence, which is a must to generate consistent sales. They check out purchasing your product at full price and you make money. They don't know and don't need to know that all the previous sales happened at a discount. One thing I want to make clear though, I am not encouraging you to price gouge your customers. Your non-discounted rate should be a fair price for your product. When you put it on discount, it should be an exceptionally good deal to encourage buyers. This strategy isn't going to be of any benefit if you just increase your price so that you still make your full profit even when you run the early sale. The play here is short-term sacrifice for long-term benefit. At the start of this video, I told you if you stuck with me, I'd share with you my last tip that I think is the easiest to do and has the biggest impact on generating best sellers. Every time I list a new product, I take that new listing and I make two more identical versions of it. Why would I do that? I've learned something on my journey to a top Etsy seller. We can do all the things. We can optimize keywords, create great titles, write catchy descriptions, spend a bunch of time on our products. We can and we should do all those things. It would be foolish not to put our best foot forward. At the end of the day though, Etsy is a numbers game and there is an element of luck as to which listings Etsy chooses to promote and rank in their search. So what I do is I duplicate the listing and only change the thumbnail image for each duplicate listing. I'm essentially running an A, B, C test on three different listings. What I noticed is that when I did this, almost every time one of the three listings would rank with Etsy and perform really well, while the other two would do nothing. We need to look at Etsy like a big funnel. We drop all of our listings into the wide open top, but then only a couple make it out of the bottom as our Etsy best sellers. So by duplicating every listing, you're essentially 3Xing the number of listings you're dropping into the top of the funnel and 3Xing the potential of best sellers coming out of it. While you're doing this, you are also getting the knowledge of which thumbnails work better for future listings. Here's an example that I recently did. I designed and released these wall planters I created three identical listings with only the thumbnail being different. We can see here in the last 30 days, one of the listings has zero in sales, while the second one has only $67 in sales. However, the third listing has over $1,000 in sales in just 30 days from that one listing alone. You're already making the one listing. How hard is it to duplicate it and change the thumbnail? Give it a try and report back to the comments and let me know if it works for you. I honestly do all the things I laid out here on all of my new listings and it's been a game changer for my Etsy shop. In order to do all the tips though, we first need products to sell. Coming up with new products to list so that you can use these tips isn't always the easiest process though. If you're interested in hearing how I generate new listing ideas for products that are in demand, you want to check out this video here. Go ahead and click it. I'll meet you over there.